Okay, Recon's video on Sunday, the 14th of August, 2022. It's just gone 4.44 p.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So, another late video. Apologies for this. Uh, the market's going to open in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, but I had a super busy weekend, and this morning when I tried to record the video earlier on, uh, the builders next door decided to deliver a skip. Uh, which is incredibly noisy and messed up the audio on the last video, so I've had to record it again. Anyway, let's get into it. This is the Weekend Futures Market Recap, where I go through 15 of the largest futures markets and show you what I am seeing on my charts. So we've got the Forex contracts over here with the Euro, British Pound, Aussie Dollar, Japanese Yen. We've got the E-mini and the 10-year notes, the largest uh, financials. And then we've got our precious metals with gold, silver, and Bitcoin. And then we've got the commodities. We've got the energy sector with crude and natural gas. And then we've got copper, the largest industrial commodity. And then we've got the ags with corn, soybeans, and wheat. Now, let's talk about the E-mini first of all. I'm going to show you the daily chart with the better indicators. This kind of detailed view uh, with everything to do with uh, volume on the left-hand side, everything to do with price on the right-hand side. We've got better momentum and better pro-am here and better sine wave on the right-hand side. And this is what I've been uh, kind of wittering on about for the last week and a half, which is the resistance that is in due on the intermediate time frame on the daily chart here. Typically what we have, if you'll remember, <coughs> we had our nice little big things happen at triple uh, signals uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that's what's led to this pretty strong rally. And we had a confirmed uptrend when we broke through resistance here. Uh, the bars turned red, <coughs> which is all kind of good. But typically what we have uh, is running into resistance when the intermediate time frame kind of kicks in. A little bit like this. We kind of kick past the resistance and we get stopped by uh, resistance on the next highest time frame. Now, I'm not suggesting we're going into a downtrend like we had in this last <coughs> move down uh, because the market, I think, has bottomed and we're going to rally um, harder and stronger than uh, people kind of imagine. Um, but at some point, we will have some weakness and a little kind of move back down into this kind of breakout area, test the breakout and so on. And so at some point, this will come in. I thought it might come in last week, <coughs> but it didn't. Uh, and I think this week, we do have the makings of uh, some uh, consolidation and a little bit of toing and froing. We had some strong trending days yesterday, but I think this week, we're going to have some backwards and forwards as we kind of find that uh, kind of... Um, temporary top in the market and kind of pull back. And this is why, um, when I go through the time frames, I'll explain it. So we go down a time frame to the 135-minute chart, and there are exactly three 135-minute uh, bars in a daily chart of the E-mini. And you can see here, as we're reaching into 4300 Rambo patterns with these R's above the highs. And Rambo means a potential reversal of an amateur breakout. So Rambo, uh, R-A-M-B-O, reversal amateur breakout. Um, and it just means when we see the Rambo patterns, typically we have uh, some weakness after that. So over the last couple of days, the Thursday, Friday, this whole move was being driven by the amateurs. And so we're going to have some uh, move back. On the highest time uh, frame here, you can see we've had a cross. Uh, so we're finding resistance at this point. But we should put in a little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame on this 135-minute uh, chart. So I could easily see us just kind of dip down and then test back up into those highs and then uh, lead to uh, some weakness where this kind of uh, plays out with resistance on the highest time frame it kind of plays out down to the lows where we have support the highest time frame. And we'll see where that goes from 4,300 you know, down to the 39.74. That area is kind of in play and we need to test back into that whole area and see where it catches, where the blue professional bars kind of step in uh, and we kind of continue the rally. But um, that's why I'm saying we're going to find it difficult to bust through 4,300 and kind of come back and play um, that uh, test of the recent push. Back it down to the 45-minute chart, more Rambo patterns here into those highs right at the close of the day uh, on Friday. And we've got to put in pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame here. And then 15-minute chart, exactly the same thing. Rambo patterns right at those highs. Here, we're playing out. We had an area of resistance here. Last time, we had a little family of pullback to end of trends, low intermediate time frame. But then we got the news. Uh, the CPI numbers, I think, kind of came out. And that kind of, uh, we busted through to the next level of resistance up here at 4,300, put in a little pullback to end of trend. So uh, I think we're going to come off a little bit, but it's going to be choppy uh, this week is essentially uh, kind of the uh, message. Uh, until we have um, a stronger kind of move down. So there we go. That's the E-mini. When you look at it on the tip bar chart here, let me just bump this up. 
13,500 tip bar chart. Yep, some blue professional bars at the end of the day. This is where we kind of uh, couldn't uh, have a signal uh, to reverse at this point here. Each time we kept going into those lows, we were caught by blue professional bars stepping in here uh, and here. And I think this was the CPI news that kind of came out and bang, we raced uh, to new levels. Now, the CPI number is also as important because uh, last week I was talking about the Fed mistake and that the Fed were raising uh, rates too f hard, too fast into weakness. And with the CPI number kind of coming out this week, which was 0% for the last month, uh, that just means that you know CPI is kind of maxing out and going to roll over a little bit. And uh, what it's resulted in is more signals on the 10-year. We've had a whole family of these over the last two weeks. Every time we kind of come into those, we kind of lurch down a little bit further each each time, but by just small increments, you can see blue professional bars starting to get interested here. This was a really strong pattern with exhaustion, sell bullish divergence. The triple signals here, the dotted lines, we get our, is when we get our three non-correlated indicators kind of signaled together. So we have an exhaustion sell signal followed by uh, bullish divergence there. That's the little red dot there. Uh, we also uh, are oversold on better sine wave, and that's the background printed in red. And you can see we keep on printing backgrounds in red. We're oversold. And then blue professional bars get broken to the highs. So we have a trailing stop based on the professional activity. And one of those eventually kind of catches. This one caught, and so we had signals uh, earlier on this week. Uh, and then towards the end of the week, we also had more signals going off. Blue professional bars kind of catch the lows. We break above the highs. We test in. This is looking nice for a little kind of consolidation pattern here with some signs of strength going on here. So if we break up through these kind of highs, that'll be a kind of confirmation that we got this. We finally found this kind of bottom in, in the 10-year notes, and we're going to start to uh, rally. So for me, that's one of the most interesting plays. I think the e is going to be choppy. I think the 10-years uh, are going to start to rally this week, and that could be good for a trade. All right, forex contracts next. Let's talk about the uh, euro. So last week I was long euro waiting for the break. I thought we would uh, go higher than this. We got uh, above 103, which for me was the kind of important number. We finally got that break to new highs, but you can see we got signals after that. So uh, took profits and got out. We could only get through uh, up to 104. So 396 was the, the highs here. We get exhaustion by bearish divergence, a whole bunch of blue professional bars at the highs. Uh, we're overbought on better sine wave. We've got some triple signals, bang, and we've had some weakness since then. Um, surprised me in terms of the strength of the weakness uh, there on the way down. Uh, so we'll see where that plays out this week. All of the Forex contracts have done the same thing, kind of maxed out and kind of come down. So let's see uh, where they go. I still am fairly bullish on uh, the non-US uh, Forex contracts. So Euro, Aussie dollar, British pound, Japanese yen, and so on. I think they're going to be stronger than the US dollar, but uh, it surprised me that we didn't get through uh, 104. But let's see what happens this week and if they kind of um, kind of come into these lows and we have an exhaustion sell pattern with uh, blue professional bars kind of step in. So that's uh, Euro, British pound, similar thing. Weakness couldn't get through 23, previous high here. Blue professional bars at the high, signs of uh, weakness here. It wasn't a triple signal because we didn't get a blow off move. Um, so we're going to come back down and test into this, you know, 20 and a half to 21, where previously the professionals did kind of pick it up. And next is Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar has been the strongest of the lot. Uh, so at 69, the professionals kind of stepped in here. We never had exhaustion sell down here, so we didn't get a triple signal, but it's kind of moved up to 71. And no blue professional bars are the highs. So this is still in a rally phase uh, for me, um, but it could come off, you know, if the other um, Euro, British pound, Japanese yen kind of weakness weaken, then the Aussie dollar is going to come off. But let's see uh, at this breakout level here if the blue professional bars kind of step in again uh, and pick it up on the Aussie dollar. And then lastly, Japanese yen. Signal was a little bit late, but we did have a triple signal. Exhaustion buy, blue professional bars at the highs kind of coming down here. Let's see on this retrace if we get blue professional bars kind of stepping in here and we get another signal to kind of push it down uh, on the Japanese yen because that would be nice for a test down into these lows. So there we go. That's uh, Forex contracts. Uh, we've got the uh, E-mini and the 10-year. Let's talk about the industrials first of all, because <coughs> although um, you know the equities market is rallying, the uh, commodities market, uh, certainly the industrial commodities and the energy sector are not uh, rallying. We've had a triple signal on crude here. So um, not a proper bottom here in terms of 88. Yes, we had a bounce. 
but we didn't have exhaustion sell down here. Uh, we had some blue professional bars kind of pick it up, uh, but we didn't get a triple signal uh, down here at the lows. And what we've done is come back up to test into the breakdown area here. Up at uh, 94, uh, 93, 94, kind of up here. And uh, we've had weakness from there with the triple signal kind of go off. So uh, crude is looking weak. Let's see if we get a continuation of this move down uh, to test 88. Uh, natural gas, we've had a, a triple signal go off as well. So we had the blow off move in natural gas uh, at 940 here, exponential bang, kind of come back down. Uh, we got held at 760 and the professionals kind of step in here. We test back down and push it up. More blue professional bars here. So, uh, and then a triple signal. So let's see if we kind of break down through uh, the 868.50 level here, get confirmation that we got kind of got weakness in natural gas. And so the economy is coming off and therefore the, uh, you know, the energy uh, sector uh, is kind of coming off. And we've got, we've still got some play in copper that's still uh, trying to find a top here but we have had exhaustion by blue some blue professional bars testing back up with blue professional bars uh, we had signals earlier on that did not work out so let's see if we get more signals uh, coming in here this week on uh, copper and we get some weakness there so uh, the industrial commodities kind of looking weak the ags have been strong and I was talking about the setup that we had in corn um, last week and we've had some strength in corn. It's been super volatile with this uh, kind of uh, test back down uh, but it is kind of continuing to rally in corn uh, and soybeans we had a nasty day here I think all of those ags got hit uh, here with this move I'm not sure what that was whether that was a weather event or some kind of macro news that came out on soy but uh, it did result in a strong move down and a whole bunch of blue professional bars kind of picking it up here at 14, 1420, and uh, it's continued to rally. So soybeans are weak, and the one that's not moved is wheat. Uh, so we're just basing and basing uh, kind of down here, having put in all of our exhaustion patterns down here at the lows. Maybe we're going to get that break up through this kind of recent high uh, into the, into that move. But uh, it's we're kind of starting to strengthen uh, on the uh, ags. Uh, but it hasn't been convincing yet. So let's see if we get uh, kind of stronger moves uh, this week in the AGs. Then lastly, uh, the precious metals and uh, Bitcoin. So gold uh, was nice and strong this week into these highs. And I was talking last week, although we had signals last week to show weakness, we didn't have blue professional bars at those highs. You can see here, when we moved the first time we moved above 1800, they were, weren't taking profits here. They weren't taking profits up here. But uh, this last move into those highs, we have had profit taking. We haven't had exhaustion buying uh, at that point, but we did have profit taking at uh, 1825. So let's see uh, what happens with gold, whether we can continue to rally there. Uh, silver continued to rally uh, again because it's just kind of following uh, gold. A nice exhaustion sell pattern, blue professional bars kind of pick it up. But at these highs, we've got some uh, kind of blue professional bars coming, uh, coming in. No exhaustion patterns yet. Um, but something happening on uh, the blue professional bars at those highs. And then lastly, Bitcoin, uh, and this is more like it in terms of a little local top. Exhaustion buys, blue professional bars at those highs, and we've had a couple of triple signals here. And uh, we kind of had another one here with bearish divergence, so we're weak on Bitcoin. So there we go, uh, rip around the futures markets. I think I've covered all of them. Uh, for me, the most interesting chart is the 10-year, uh, to see if we get a kind of uh, a, a kick in that this week. Uh, I think the E-mini is just going to chop uh, this week, maybe at the latter part of this week. Once we've played out all of those pullback to end of trend patterns, we'll get a nasty down day uh, where people kind of uh, get shaken out a little bit. But uh, I tend to be a little bit early because I've been looking for this resistance on the E-mini for you know two weeks. And um, so maybe this is the week of chop and then we get a nasty week next week instead of looking for a nasty day at the end of this week. So open-minded about that and we'll see what happens. Let's see if crude continues uh, to weaken, kind of getting down through 91 uh, and would and 90 would kind of show real weakness in crude because we've got uh, signals there um, in natural gas and crude. Uh, so those both could play out those week uh, this week as well. So there we go. Uh, it's a minute before five. The market's going to open. Uh, so let's see what happens in the first few minutes. And good luck with your trading this week.